and for putting this all on for me and just say to those of you who want to that there are all kinds of courses, my courses on Watkins Academy website. Anyway, so in this session, we're looking at how to make holy water and how to bless a candle. Um, I want to say one thing kind of philosophically, first of all. One of the things that I'm about is trying to deconstruct the pomp and the control mechanisms of organized religion, organized ceremony, patriarchal setups in the world of um, magic and Wicca and shamanism and the priesthoods of the various faith communities. Um, without exception, almost within them, you'll find when it comes to <coughs> blessing things, you know, objects, candles, holy water, people, it's done with a certain uh, amount of um, just a little bit of pompous ceremony. And the pomp is okay for being theatrical, but it puts a lot of people off doing it themselves, um, partly because they think they may get told off because they shouldn't be doing it because a, a priest, priestess should be doing it, and partly because they feel they should have that kind of um, strong, loud, theatrical presence to do that work, and that, that is not the case. <clears throat> In actual fact, the work of blessing um, is done most easily and most um, effectively when you're humble and your attitude is quite um, small compared to the hugeness of the cosmos. The basic principles of all blessings is the same. You probably know it already, but we'll just go through it. Here you are, little human body, little compared to the size of the planet, tiny compared to the cosmos, and out in the cosmos, in the universe, there are these vibrations, these energies, these harmonics. And the art of blessing is that we little folk connect with these fields of energy and we attune to them, we get connected to them and we bring it through and put it into something. We bring that energy through and we land it into something. Um, so we've got two relationships going on here. We've got one is a little nightlight. We've got a relationship with the candle and we've got a relationship with this huge energy field out there that we want to bring down through us to bless the little candle. So there's a starting point of politeness diplomacy, which is to regard both this little thing which is the candle and the big thing which is the energy field as alive and having consciousness. So when you're blessing a candle or blessing a water or blessing the salt that goes into the water that makes holy water, you're actually saying hello to the candle itself. In, in my case, I tend to go, oh look, there, there are molecules, atoms of wax in the candle, and it's alive. I can't see it with my ordinary eyes, but I know that it is alive. And basic shamanic magical principles, we recognize that everything is alive and has its own form of consciousness. So I'm looking at this little candle, and privately I'm going, hi candle, how are you doing? hello little molecules in it, I'm greeting you, I'm being polite. And in that politeness, I'm setting up a connection with this object. I could do it very quickly, hello candle, bless, but behind it, there's a practice of, oh, okay, this is a thing that's alive and I am in rapport and in relationship with it. Equally, the blessing is coming from this huge energy field and for the sake of this particular session, we'll say that the energy field we're seeking to connect with is um, pure, positive, benevolent love. 
There are loads of other energies out there, but in this case we're just going pure benevolent love, the love that's in the heart of the goddess, in the heart of God, in the heart of spirit, whatever you call all that is the great mystery. So the trick is that you pause. I'll go through this quickly now and then we'll do it much more slowly and we'll do it all together. So you pause and I go, hello, I'm opening to God, to spirit, to goddess, to the unconditional love you use, whatever thoughts, language that you want. And just the mere idea of it is enough to make the connection. You may be in a terrible mood, you may be very neurotic, you may be feeling wound up and depressed, but the mere fact that you're saying, hello goddess, hello God, hello spirit, hello unconditional love, is enough to light a little candle in the darkness for you and connect you. You go, hello God, hello goddess, whatever, whatever your naming is of that field of energy, and you open yourself up and you have a sense of it coming down through you, and people use their hands normally, but you could hold it to your heart. And you just allow the vibration to come through you, the resonance to come through you and into the candle. And you just hold it over the candle for the moment and you visualize the energy going into the candle and every little molecule and atom in it vibrating with the blessing. In a church, in a big ceremony, um, there will be a kind of rigmarole about talking to God, to Christ, to unconditional love, and doing a whole load of movements and bringing it down and through. I suggest to you, and in my experience, it's just as effective to just go, hello, unconditional love, the benevolence of the universe come through me and into this candle and just have a sense of it going in to the candle. So let's let's just do that very quickly, everybody. I ask people to bring their own candles. If you haven't got a candle there, use, use any object. It doesn't really matter. And, and just close your eyes and just know, just because you're alive, that you're connected to the unconditional love that exists in the universe and the cosmos. Can you, can you hear the crows outside my home? They're excited by this work. So they may quieten down in a second. I think they're joining in. So let's start again. Close your eyes. And just in your heart, in your mind, just go, yes, there is benevolence in the cosmos. There is goddess, God, whatever you call it, unconditional love in the cosmos. And just by thinking that, you connect with it. Being connected with it, some of the energy comes down into you, just happens, flows into you, and take your hand, right hand if you're right-handed, left hand if you're left-handed, Place your palm over the candle and just allow the sense of the energy to come through your palm and into the candle, into the wax of the candle and have a sense of every little atom, every little molecule in the candle, every little elemental spark in the candle lighting up with a blessing. And you do it for as long as you feel like it, two seconds, five seconds, 30 seconds. And that, that's basically it. And then when you light the candle and it burns, as it burns, the blessing will come out of the candle. Even if what I've just said is complete delusion, psychologically, it's a lovely thing to do. It's a lovely way to do a blessing. Now, if you belong to a particular faith tradition or you or you feel aligned with a particular faith tradition um, you may know that there are particular symbols that belong to it so for example um, if you're into magic and wicca and a certain form of paganism you may be into the five-pointed star the pentagram um, if you're a christian you may 
be connected with the cross. If you're um, Jewish in the Kabbalah, you may be connected with the six-pointed star of David. And there are other symbols from other traditions. Other pagans, pagan Christians, use the equal-armed cross. So what you can do also if you want to, and I only do this if, if you feel connected to a faith, is when you're bringing the energy down through you, when you're bringing the blessing down through you, you can, with your hand, paint the energy of your symbol into the object. So if, if you relate to the Christian tradition, you could put a cross. Or if you were more into magic, you could put a five-pointed star into the candle. And it helps bring the energy through into the object. Um, so what you can see here is a general principle. Little and humble, connected with the big energy, with the love, with benevolence, connected with the life of the object you're working with. Bring it through, and you, only have, you don't have to be a priest, priestess, or somebody specially ordained. Just by connecting, it's enough to bring it through. And then if you want to, you can use your hand. So if you're at home watching this right now, why don't you just play with the symbols your palm could make? So if you're holding something, first of all, try an equal-armed cross. Just try it going slowly one arm and the other arm. Just see how that feels for you. Or let's do it with a five-pointed star. So it's one side, second side, third side, fourth side, fifth side. Just putting it into the wax of the candle. And you can play with it. There are no rules here because it's the connection and the movement. It's it's flowing and harmonic, um, and different faith traditions, different groups will maybe try and hold you in a particular way of doing it. Um, I, I would suggest to you that you find the way that works best for you. We're, we're in a global culture now, um, there's world music, world food, also world practical energy work. So that's how to um, bless a candle. It's been mightily blessed, hasn't it? So I think I'll just light it. Okay. So there it is, just sitting there. I've got these computer paraphernalia around me. One is to do the streaming, the other one is so that I can monitor what's happening on Facebook at the same time. I need to check with uh, that there are um, any messages coming through. No, not. Just hang, be with me for a second. Okay, so we haven't got any messages yet. So listen, I'm going to show you now how to make holy water. Um, holy water is again a worldwide phenomenon and it's used because the liquid you can sp spray or put on yourself and you can use it when it's been charged up, when it's been blessed, it has a vibration, a radiance, an energy that Oh, uh, E10's starting to send me stuff now, and I need to just switch off the sound so that I don't hear it. Um, and where was I? I got distracted by the noise. So listen, when you're working with the holy water, I'm just getting the salt now, which I'm going to make the holy water with, and another bowl that I'm going to use. When you sprinkle the holy water somewhere, it's so dynamized and vibrant, that stuck energy is kind of shaken up and forced to move. And in most intense of situations um, where there's a really nasty energy, um, the blessed water will shift stuff that's really unpleasant, move it along. 
Um, so this is, I'm going to take you through a classical way of making holy water. The basic principle is that you have some salt, which you bless. You have some water that you bless. And then you take the salt and you place it in the water and it's kind of a, a, a double whammy. It's an amplification of its power. You bless the salt and you bless the water separately. In each case, you address the water as if it were a living creature. You address the salt as if it were a living creature. And you bring the blessing through you into the salt and the water, maybe using hand movements. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I once was in a group teaching this. And I was teaching it this way, the way I'm teaching you. And I said, look, I'm, I'm going to use... Christian language for this next bit uh, because it works for me but you don't have to use Christian language you can use pagan language uh, Sufi language you can use Kabbalistic language you can use Buddhist language you can use Hindu language and so I blessed the salt and the water using Christian language and two members of my group were absolutely outraged outraged um, that I was doing this and they wanted to stop me and one of them was a Catholic who thought I was um, blaspheming because I was taking over a role that was um, only the priests were allowed to do it. It was a form of blasphemy, me doing what priests do. And the other <clears throat> was a hedge witch, um, Wicca person, who was outraged that in a circle studying energy work, I would bring in a Christ, bring in Christian language. So, so there was the, the pagan over here attacking me, and the Christian over here attacking me. I, I, um, I was both shocked and um, temporarily delighted. I must be getting something right if they're both having a go at me, or maybe I'm getting something terribly wrong. Anyway, but listen, what I want you to get is there's a there's the basic principle here is address the salt and the water as if they're creatures. Be small and humble as you allow the energy of unconditional love, positive benevolence, God's spirit to come through you. Use the symbols of your hands to make the blessing into the salt and into the water. Okay? So, slowly I'll do it. Look, here's the salt, ordinary salt in here. You can use any kind of salt. Use what you've got at hand. And salt is good because it's crystalline structure and cr crystals absorb vibrations. That's why crystals are in computers and radios and televisions. They absorb vibrations. Um, so I go, hello, sort. And there's, there's a famous magical word in which is, greetings, O creature of salt. I just go, hello, salt. I make a connection. People might say, in the name of goddess, Christ in the name of, in the vibration of, I connect with the unconditional field of love and benevolence in the universe. And I, I'm going to use the equal armed cross. I bless thee, O creature of salt. And I'm now feeling and sensing the vibe going through me, through my hands, into the salt. I bless thee, O creature of salt. I do it three times. You may want to do it once. You may want to do it ten times. Do, do it in a flow that feels right for you. And as you do it, have a sense of <clears throat> the crystals of the salt just absorbing your vibration, and they're kind of sparkling. And I'm going to add something on here, which is a little bit magical. You may not want to use it. I bless you so that wherever you are scattered, all traces of negativity may depart. Wherever you are scattered, all traces of negativity may depart. And I have a sense of the salt glowing. Then there's the water. There's my bowl. Put some water in the bowl. 
These are not special bowls. These are just nice white bowls that we use for food here. You can use anything. If you're working with children, um, you could use little plastic bowls or little, little Mickey Mouse bowls. It's, um, it's, it's the intention and the energetic that matters, not the form of it. So here's the water. And I go, again, I go, oh, hello, creature of water. In the name of connected to goddess, unconditional love, cosmic benevolence, connected with cosmic benevolence, O oh, creature of water, I bless you. So I'm tuning into the water, it's alive, little elementals in it are alive, and they're receiving the blessing. I bless you so that wherever you are scattered, all traces of negativity may depart. And you get a, I get a sense of it, yes, the water's blessed, it's charged, salt is charged. Right? And then what I do is I take the salt and because I used the equal armed cross, the Celtic cross, to bless the salt in the water, I'm going to drop it, the salt, into the water using the same shape of the equal armed cross. And I'll do it three times because that's my little ritual. You could do it once, you could do it ten times. So I bless the salt, I bless the water, I've now put the salt in the water using the same symbols and then I just once again give the water a final blessing. Bless you, water, salt, holy water, wherever you are scattered all traces of negativity may depart. have a little sense of gratitude, thanks to the water and the salt and goddess, God, spirit of the universe. And now I have holy water. And just using my fingers, I will just sprinkle it wherever I want it to go in order to move energy along. If you've got children, children love sprinkling the water. Um, how long will it stay charged, people ask? Uh, I don't know, a couple of hours, maybe it will hold its resonance. Maybe longer if you bless it again. I have no um, hesitation when I've done the cleaning I want to do to pour it out in the garden. Because I always make some more. Um, it's wonderful if, in your home if, if you've had a row, an argument, to just go in the room, open the windows, Bless it with holy water. If somebody stayed in your house and you want to move their vibe on from the house, just um, sprinkle the room with holy water. Maybe make some banging noises to vibrate the room up so that the energy moves. And um, okay, so that's those are the basic principles for making blessing a candle and making holy water um, and I'm looking to see if there are any questions coming through that you want me to answer um, so I'm going to ask Ethan who's my wingman um, whether He's, he's WhatsApping me um, to see if there's anything else you need to know. So Ethan, WhatsApp me and tell me if there's any questions coming through. So I'm not seeing anything. So there you go. Um, how to make holy water. Oh, here we go. The first question has come through. Yay. Um, the question, can you bless 
other liquids. Can you bless soap? You can bless anything. It's a nice idea actually, blessing soap. Yeah, what a good idea to bless soap and then wash with it. You'd need to, I was just imagining, if I were blessing soap, I would need to have a sense of the vibe that's coming through me, going all the way through into the centre of the soap and not just being on the outside. Um, yeah. yeah, what a good idea, bless soap. Yeah. I'm just thinking of a two-year-old I was watching recently playing with big bubbles, you know, those big bubbles you can make. I was thinking if those bubbles had been blessed, if the liquid had been blessed beforehand, the bubbles would have an extra sparkly uh, vibe about them. Somebody's asked, is this just um, a placebo effect? Is it just psychological? Um, I think that's a great question. Is what we've just done in terms of blessing <coughs> just a bit of deluded stuff to make you feel as though you're in control of stuff that can't be controlled? And... So yes, there, there's a psychological benefit to it. Of course there's a psychological benefit to it. But you know, um, let me be a bit pompous for a second. I am in my early 70s. I have a doctorate from the London School of Economics. I have 26 books published, including a couple of academic ones. I'm not stupid. I also did three years psychotherapy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm absolutely aware of the possibilities of delusion and projection and imagination but I'm also empathic and sensitive and can feel things and I tell you holy water works it really really works and blessing a candle also works you can feel the vibe and it's not just a psychological placebo effect that said I've got one tiny brain cell going oh yes it is but I've got 99.99% of my brain cells know my experience is that it's completely real. Here's a cheeky question. How would you bless a drink, a libation, any differently? Well, um, <laughs> do you know, I've never thought of blessing a drink. I, I think in a sense, isn't it, people bless their food before they eat, don't they, with a, with a grace. May this food be blessed. And may this drink be blessed. And I think it's a good idea. I'm kind of shifting us sideways. And it's a good idea to bless medicine. It's, it's wonderful to come to look at your medicine, your aspirin, whatever it is, and go, hello, creature of aspirin, and bless it. Again, it's a, 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 there's a placebo effect, yes, but there's also a relationship with the medicine, which may help. Um, so, um, yeah, but I'd be careful about blessing alcohol, because I think alcohol is a challenging drug in our culture. Uh, it's a lot of fun for a lot of people, and it's also very damaging. Um, but wine is at the centre of the Christian Eucharist, isn't it? With this huge blessing on the wine. So you can see I'm conflicted about blessing drinks. Here's a question from Tom Minter. Hi, Tom. How could we best incorporate sound and frequency, such as tuning forks, singing bowls and tingsha? I think that if you are a practitioner who is accustomed to using bowls and tuning forks and actual vibrations and sounds, then you could experiment with how that attunes you to bringing the blessing through. Um, 
I don't use those um, artifacts, but I know very well that the resonance of tuning forks and singing bowls can of themselves bring through a blessing, bring through an energy. But music itself is a harmonic that brings through a blessing, which is why so many prayers and chants are used in spirituality. <coughs> and we know, don't we, that in um, many ceremonies, people will sing and chant their invocation that connects with the energy and brings it through. So I would see singing bowls and tuning forks as part of the music that can help you bring through the blessing and, and echo it and amplify it. Um, I think it's a very good point, and, but you're then going into the field of um, bigger ceremonies. One, one of the things that I'm trying to um, model here is that in any household, you could be on the, the 12th floor of a block of flats in central London, single parent with a couple of kids, and the simplicity of, yes, I can bless the salt, I can bless the water, I can make holy water, and I can bless my, my flat. <clears throat> I like keeping it simple, of course, and if you had a singing bowl and music there as well, that would help you. So it's really interesting to experiment with that. Anissa Hamid asks, will this provide protection to a house as well? if sprinkled around it. Yes, it will. Um, in the house where I live, we start every morning, every day, without exception, we light a candle in the kitchen and we allow a blessing to come through it and to the house. Now done day by day by day, month by month, year by year, that builds up a radiance, which is protective. And then if we have a difficult vibration in the house for one reason or another, people have visited or there's been an argument or something like that, then yeah, absolutely, we will then use holy water as well and light a couple more candles and bless them and it will cleanse and make the house radiant. A safe house <clears throat> is particularly a house where there's a radiance coming from in it that glows outwards. And of course, beyond that, there are techniques of psychic protection, <clears throat> which, are, which are in my books and in the Watkins Academy course that you can use to create bubbles of protection as well that will help you. But I like very much the idea that if at the core of your home there's this beautiful rhythm of lighting candles and keeping it cleansed, that, it, that will create a glow that keeps it protected. Linda asks... Would you say that it's about the power of intention? It's a really interesting question, Linda. You know, I don't think it's the, about the power of intention or, or the way those words sound, power, intention. I think it's about the ability to allow yourself a little frequency that connects with a bigger energy. It's not your energy or your power that's blessing the salt or the water or the candle. It's something much bigger than you. You have an ally. You have this huge ally which is coming through you to bless the candle. Um, I think it's problematic if people think the power of blessing comes from within them. I think it feeds, um, it could be challenging for the ego. And I think it's much safer to just go, I'm a humble channel for something that's much bigger than myself and let it come through you. And it's more, it's more powerful as well. Of course you need the intention to do it, but that intention doesn't need to be ramped up and amplified. and It can be humble and little. And I say this especially because I want people who might be feeling depressed or low or upset to know that you don't have to be in a positive mood in order to bring through a blessing. 
that you can be in an unhappy mood, but just the thought of connecting with something that's bigger and better and more beautiful and more loving and bringing it through you can be very, um, can, can be effective, but it's also very encouraging and um, supportive. Diana O'Grady, could you infuse water with sage as an alternative to smudging? What an interesting idea. So for those of you who don't know, sage is a herb that when you burn it, it has a, an aroma that has a very sharp electric vibe which clears spaces. So I would say, yes, you could of course use essence of sage into water to make sage powered water um, and that would that would be like a flower essence wouldn't it or like a homeopathic uh, water um, and that would be a whole other subject wouldn't it we'd have to start a workshop now on how to make flower essences um, so in answer to your question can we infuse water with sage yeah it's a plant essence isn't it it's plant power slightly different from what we're doing here which is um human and spiritual energy power <laughs> where you are the um, the sage so to speak that's a terrible pun sorry about that um, where you are the one bringing through the energy um, but interesting question Diana thank you Dorothy Cooper says this is not a question it's a nice affirmation and suggestion she says I always bless the water I drink and think it tastes nicer. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Food tastes better when it's blessed. That's psychological and energetic and esoteric, which leads into the next question from a person with a fantastic name from Oceanus. Procolarum. I don't know. What does Procolarum mean? Tell somebody something about Procolarum. So, is, is this a business? Is this a matter of spirit model versus psychological model? I, my doctorate's in psychology, political psychology, and I'm also an, an energy worker. So for me, the two blend very, very well. Um, there are, however, psychologists who see the conversation about energy work, spirits, as, as a delusion, and therefore immediately are beginning to um, frame it as some form of mental illness, some, a, a psychological problem. Um, there are, however, there's a huge body of psychology called transpersonal, transpersonal psychology, which is very comfortable with embracing both mainstream psychology and also the world of spirituality. Um, Carl Jung, archetypal psychology, analytical psychology was also able to embrace it. Um, so well, that war possible conflict between energy workers, magicians on one side and psychologists on the other. Um, there are also people in the middle who do both and see no uh, either or, no conflict between the two. Um, I do absolutely recommend to energy workers, people who do blessings, that they have some understanding of psychology because then they can check themselves out in case they do start to veer towards being over-imaginative or moving slightly in the direction of some delusions. It's a, it's a tight rope, um, but an interesting question. Thank you. Oh, Oceana Pro, Oceanus Procolarum has told us that he, his, her name, I don't want to be gender specific here, um, means Sea of Storms. That's a invocative name to call yourself, isn't it? Sea of storms. So there we are. Um, we've moved from 
little bowl of blessed water to a sea of storms to an ocean of bliss. So I think we'll end it there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed and found this uh, free session courtesy of Watkins helpful. Um, there's loads of other stuff that's useful on the Watkins Facebook page and Watkins Academy has some wonderful courses with Watkins Wisdom Academy has some wonderful courses on it too, including a couple of mine. So there you are. So, um, the water is blessed, the salt is blessed. We've blessed a candle. Just um, use these strategies as and when you feel you want to. As I say, in our household, we bless and light a candle every morning for the house. And making holy water is something that I've done with my children in the kitchen with them just standing around. So I don't do it as something extraordinary or special. And um, I hope this has encouraged, empowered and deepened your own practice. So I wish you lots of love and um, blessed be.